Welcome everybody to the inside of my $3,000 Volvo S80 T6 Executive. As a refresher, you basically heard what you needed to hear already. I bought this, what I would consider the Swedish Crown Victoria because of the way it looks, the way it rides, and the way it kind of drives. And these comfy, glorious comfy seats with, of course, the crotch pocket on the front. It's something like $44,000 new in 2001. And I got it for $3,000, which is pretty good. But what often happens when you get a car at the very bottom of its depreciation curve like this is that you tend to run into a couple little problems. And this car has no shortage of issues. There's obviously some sort of suspension thing on the front, like it knocks when I go over bumps, I think the control arm bushings might be out and I've got various random cosmetic problems dashed about the inside and the outside. But the biggest problem is, I think has to do with the throttle, which I don't know if it's a, a fly-by-wire or a cable-driven throttle, which I should really look that up, but I'm too lazy to, we're just gonna look and see if we can find a cable driven throttle or not. Basically the problem right now is on acceleration, if you're not really, really smooth on the gas pedal, it lurches a little bit. Like it doesn't know what to do. Like there's something wrong with the throttle or something up in front of me isn't making the car accelerate the way it's supposed to. This is something that didn't occur on the test drive. And then it immediately occurred right after I bought it, which is cool. So basically the car, was really well behaved the day that I went to look at it. And then as soon as I agreed to buy it, that's when I was like, ha ha, yes. Now I can allow everything to break. And that's usually the problem with buying cheap European cars like this. I'm hoping that I'm not totally screwed. I very well might have screwed myself already, but I'm hoping that I haven't. So let's explore this throttle thing. So if I go on the gas a little, it just, I don't know if you could see that. I was kind of exaggerating the movement a little just so it was easier to tell. But it really only does it from the stop. When it actually gets up to speed, it's perfect. When I ease on the gas pedal, you do feel it go and it makes a little bit of a knock sound. It's hard to really tell, but it does make some sort of sound, but only when I ease on the throttle. I don't think it's a transmission problem because it's already in gear. I know these things had problems with their transmissions, so ease it and then it didn't do it that time. It's really strange. Okay, my hands are all be safe. Okay, here we go. It's weird because sometimes it lurches, sometimes it doesn't. We're gonna have to look at it a little bit more closely and hopefully we can figure out what the problem is. So I'm gonna meet you guys in the garage. Change of clothes, obviously. We're gonna do some work, so we're gonna pull it on the ramp, which in a normal car with no throttle issues is no problem at all. With this car, well, That wasn't too bad. So as you can see, this car struggles a bit when it comes to this really important thing that a car is generally supposed to do, which is called driving. But there are other issues that are smaller. There's the fact that I've got the headlight washers and wipers, which I think is a cool little interesting touch except for the fact that the only one that works is that one. This one doesn't do anything. It might just be loose. So we're gonna look at that. I also think the shocks might not be very good. It rides kind of harshly. And various wear items on the inside of the car. That rear fender doesn't look very good. All right, so one interesting thing that I did find, we'll just deviate for a minute from all the bad news, is inside the owner's manual pouch, which I thought I didn't have until last night. I looked in the glove box and it magically appeared. I guess I just didn't notice it before. You find the original window sticker 
for this car, which is kind of rare to see after 21 years. And it's not all that interesting, but it does show that this car was originally $44,025 at the dealership. So I got a massive $41,025 discount by getting this thing for $3,000. But there may be a couple reasons for why I got it for so cheap. It's kind of an interesting thing. I've never had a window sticker for any of my cars before. So I'm pretty excited by that. I'll just throw it in the crotch pocket so I can have easy access to it. Anytime the car breaks down, I can look for where the oil cap is. All I gotta do is spread my legs open grab the pouch out of that pocket, and suddenly I've been demonetized for getting on some sort of watch list, but we're gonna move on from that. To a little confession, which is the fact that in most of my car videos where we're actually doing work, you'll notice that what I actually do is just stand around and watch, but no longer. Today I'm gonna prove to myself that I can do car maintenance all on my own, and we're gonna start before we actually look underneath and check for leaks, which there will be leaks. We're gonna, or actually I am going to attempt to change the oil by myself, which when you consider the fact that I am a car person, this should really be something that's easy, but I'm terrible at working on cars. I am notorious for putting oil caps on the wrong way and dropping bolts where they really shouldn't go. So this might be interesting, it might not be but I'm gonna give it a shot. Also, you can see on the more cosmetic side of things, this bumper on the bottom isn't really in the best of shape. It's been scraped along a lot. That's not something I'm gonna bother fixing. Also, my headlight has a bit of condensation in it, which is not normally what you would want out of a headlight to have it filled with water. But I'm gonna get started. All right, I got my oil pan here and my new oil and we're gonna get started. I need light. This light is this light is really good for actually just shining directly into your eyes. That control arm bushing doesn't look very good either, but I mean, I'm like a total idiot when it comes to car issues like that. So for all I know, it could be just fine. Because I'm a real car guy and real car guys work on their cars. And that's, this is me working on my car all by myself. Uh, okay, I'm already stuck. Not a lot of room down here and I don't, no, where the drain plug is. I'm so claustrophobic. All right, what do we think? I'm thinking that looks like a 10 millimeter. What do we got here? 13, 12? A 12 millimeter bolt. Oh my gosh. Things are caked with oil everywhere. Thomas told me that I should take the belly pan off and then I'll find it, but it's just so unclear. Righty tighty lefty loosey, that's how you work on cars. Once you work that out, you are golden for life. I'm almost ready to do like a manual swap on this thing. Can you imagine a space ball swap on an S80? How sick would that be to drive, not to work on? Ugh, I'm already getting dust in my face. Okay. Well, that's off. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Where do I go? Oh, there we go. I found it. <laughs> what is that? It's like diarrhea all over that belly pan bolt. Here it comes. Oh. Mm. That's nice, isn't it? Mm-mm-mm. That was really loose for an oil drain plug, I've got to say. All right, now this is the mark of a true mechanic. Can I get this off without spilling on myself too much? Okay, here we go, here we go. Ready, you guys? Watch the pro. Nope. Damn it. Ah, 
All right, I failed. Can I get a napkin? <laughs> a lot. Everyone's clicked on this video to laugh at me. I already know. All right, I'm gonna let that drain. I think a little bit of it got on my glasses as well. So my tires are eight years old, you're saying? Excellent. If you want to tan, you can either go to like tropical island somewhere or you can change the oil on a Volvo. Oh uh, yeah, I have to do that filter too, don't I? <laughs> this is one of those stupid oil filters where you have to use your hands. <laughs> I hate these oil filters. Because <laughs> they remind me about why I need to go to the gym more often. I've just never been able to get that tool to work, so I hate it. Ah, uh, come on. Urgh, think manly thoughts. <laughs> that's not gonna work. Oh, do you have that breaker bar? Yeah. Yeah. All right, that'll work. Game over, oil filter. Hehehe. <laughs> ah, there we go. I, I just love how the fact that the actual drain plug was so easy, like it was really, it was like finger tight. And then this one's, yeah, torque to 200. All right, I'm gonna get myself out of the way this time. No, there's the oil filter, but the housing for it is still stuck to your, yeah. Come on Volvo, why don't you like me? There we go, perfect. Yeah, there's a puddle underneath it now. Actually, maybe I could just wipe it off and put it in right now. You guys can see that. Oh, come on. Why can't I just do it? Why do I have to get up all close and personal where it's gonna drip in my eye? Yeah, I think that's in. I don't feel any grooves or anything. It's just not in all the way. It's stuck on the oil filter again. Oh, okay. That's good. Can't even get it close to where it's supposed to go. Getting it started in the back was the better idea. Uh, where is the tool? Oh, I, put, I put it all the way back there. Ow. That was really hard. And I was just putting on a stupid belly pan. I'm a useless mechanic, am I? Oh, Jesus. Now I get to put oil in it. Well, it's getting there. Slower, slower. Oh my gosh, this sucks. <laughs> This really sucks. Why would they have that? <laughs> I should have taken this thing in for an oil change, just paid them. How much extra labor do they charge for the hour that they spend pouring the oil in? Oh my gosh. <clears throat> that was a lot of effort. <laughs> So that's good enough. The thing is, is like, it's so wide that you have to really See. lean over. So what, it doesn't work the way you're supposed to. There it is. You know, I put the oil cap on my BMW wrong once and I'm marked for life. That is on straight. <laughs> that has to be on straight. Rubbish. Look oh at it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It, it went one. Oh, it, okay. it, 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 it was 100% right. yeah, on yeah. straight. Well, look at it from my angle and tell me. I know what you like mean. It. There you go. Okay. Let's hope it doesn't explode because I did just change the oil myself. Our oil light turned off. <laughs> That's good. Okay, and transmission fluid check. It looks clean and it doesn't smell burned. Yeah, maybe somebody changed it, which could be a good sign, could be not a good sign. Well, my one is just pump the throttle a couple of times. Anything? Yeah. I don't hear anything moving either. Up she comes. Let's check wheel play. What do you think? 
Yeah, that's pretty solid. Not as bad as I was expecting it to be, to be honest. I do think that it's on the other side that there's problems, so. Yeah, this side's more solid. I don't see, do the up and down. There's yeah. no movement. How many miles are on this thing? 130,000, it says. Seems more. Well, uh, this side seems pretty tight. Yeah, and um, that's what I'm thinking too, pretty tight. Do you think the shocks are bad then or something? I don't know. Can we struts. look? So these or are struts? struts. Not what you're looking for is oil. Is it leaking? It doesn't seem like it's leaking. But it yeah. is an OEM shock. Moving back over once again. Also seems, oh, but see, look here how this is, the, see how the boots got all the way up? Yeah. And the other one's not. Yeah, the other one's all collapsed. Uh-huh. But the boot is just the boot. I don't see any leaking, so that's the thing. Oh, you know what? What? That side doesn't have the inner fender. Huh. That's cool. I don't even know if I can see it from yeah. underneath. There's not a lot of rust down here, which is good. I mean, there's surface rust on the exhaust a little bit, but it's okay. It does look pretty old back here. There isn't anything that feels like off on the back end, so I don't think we need to worry about that for right now. Okay. So what we can deduce from today's video are a couple things. Number one, I am still completely incapable of doing car work by myself. I needed a little bit of encouragement to take that belly pan off and then there I was able to find the drain plug, but it was still way more difficult than it should have been considering the fact that it's basically the first car maintenance thing that you're supposed to learn. At least I am trying and I am motivated to learn to do my own work on my cars, <laughs> but it is running with fresh oil now, which is good. That means it's gonna run healthier and I can go home and go to sleep at night knowing that I actually take care of my cars somewhat and I don't neglect them, which is a worry that I have owning three cars. And then the other thing is that you sort of get what you pay for for $3,000. There's a lot of small problems with this car, like this fender, the various cosmetic issues on the interior, the headlight wiper, which was an easy fix actually. It was just loose. But we did find out that the tires are dead and they're also eight years old, which is good considering the fact that I thought they were much newer, but that's why you check those things before you buy the car. So that's sort of my fault. Also, I have a set of pretty much new snow tires, which is a nice thing to have as an extra, but that means I'm gonna to have to buy three sets of summer tires this spring if I wanna keep running three cars and we'll have to see. The throttle problem or whatever it's, whatever's causing it to lurch on acceleration, we weren't able to figure that out because I guess it turns out it's a fly-by-wire throttle, so it's electronic, not a cable, which is, would have been an easy way to determine what the problem was. So I guess I'll have to do a little bit more research on that, post in some forums or whatever. If anyone watching this knows Volvo S80s and they're screaming at me right now because the issue is so obvious, don't hesitate to put it in the comments because I have literally no idea what's wrong. <laughs> for right now, it's not perfect, but I could have gotten a lot worse for $3,000, I think. And I think I'm gonna drive it for a little bit and if it continues to be reliable, maybe I'll keep it longer, maybe I won't. I, I really don't know what to do with this thing right now, so we'll just see. But until the next update, I'm gonna end the video there. I hope everybody enjoyed the laughter at me attempting to change my own oil. I really don't know what I'm doing, but I'm trying my best. <laughs> so thanks everybody for watching. Hope everybody has a great day. Bye-bye.